Hi guys, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic out there. So, today on the podcast, can a circuit breaker bring down an airliner? Stay tuned. Well guys, um, as you can see from that horrific example of Span Air Flight 5022, the sad answer to that question is yes, it can. However, what we have to realize is that it is not going to be only a circuit breaker that leads to that kind of horrific result. Okay. A incident or an accident is always the result of several safety barriers being breached. Okay. That on top of a threat of some sort is what's ultimately going to lead to something like this. Okay, You might have heard of something called the Swiss cheese model, which is Dr. Reason came up with. Um, basically what he showed was that he, in, in order for an accident or incident to occur, um, you have to picture uh, layers of safety okay so safety barriers lined up after each other and in those safety barriers there will be little holes little kind of um, possibilities to break those safety barriers now an incident or accident only occurs when all of those little holes are lining up after each other and there is a threat that manages to breach all of the safety barriers and then lead to an incident or accident okay so we were talking about circuit breakers. Why was that a crucial thing in this particular accident? Well, because in this case, I don't think it was a circuit breaker actually, but it is indicated by a circuit breaker in the Boeing. It was a system called the takeoff configuration warning system. Okay, the TOVs in the MD-80 and the takeoff configuration warning system in the, um, in the Boeing. Okay, that was malfunctioning. Now, prior to that, the crew had, for one reason or another, missed a couple of um, safety steps in their checklist and they had not configured the aircraft properly for takeoff the trailing edge flaps were not set so when the aircraft tried to lift off it very quickly stalled and led to the accident that you've just seen okay so what does the industry what does the airline industry do to counteract these kind of threats well first of all they have to realize that this is a, a big threat so prior to this incident there was not too much push towards protecting the takeoff configuration system after this incident, there was, okay? And different airlines um, approached this threat in different ways. My airline thought that this was a major threat, so we made some, some quite big changes to our procedures after this accident occurred. And I will go through a few of them now, all right? So, the takeoff configuration system monitors a few crucial systems that has to be set in the correct way in order for the aircraft to take off safely. If they are not, a warning system will sound like that and you you know that something is wrong so you will not attempt a takeoff. Okay, and what does it monitor? Well, it monitors the trailing edge flaps positions, which has to be within flaps 1 to 25 in the Boeing 737. Okay, it also monitors the uh, leading edge flaps from uncommanded motion or not being in the correct takeoff position. It monitors a um, speed brake lever to make sure that that is in the down detent position. It monitors the parking brake to make sure that that is set. It also very crucially monitors that the stabilizer trim is set within the takeoff configuration band, which is indicated by a green part of the of the um, uh, trailing sorry of the uh, stabilizer trim setting index all right i'll show it to you here it also monitors some internal systems for example some spoiler valves making sure that there's no uh, the spoilers are not opening but things like that so as you can see they're monitoring the whole kind of takeoff configuration which is the reason for the name so what are we doing then to make sure that this is working well um during the cockpit safety inspection and the preliminary flight deck pr procedure 
which by the way, if you have my Mantra Aviation app and you get the, uh, the setup playlist, you'll be able to see exactly what we're doing here, okay? During that procedure, the pilot flying will be advancing the thrust levers up like this, beyond the takeoff range. And why they're doing that is because they now want to make sure that the takeoff configuration warning uh, goes off. So you can hear it. That means that the system is working because at that point, the aircraft is not properly set up for takeoff. All right. We then continue our procedure and we go up and we check that that circuit breaker, that specific circuit breaker is not pulled. All right. We'd obviously, we check all of the circuit breakers to make sure nothing is pulled, but that one is actually indicated by a color to be easy to find, to make sure that it is pushed in. Right, so then we continue our setup. Uh, we do our checklists, and in the checklist, the systems that are monitored by the takeoff configuration warnings are checked multiple times. So it's not only once you will be challenged with flaps, it will be several times, both in the before start checklist, in the before uh, taxi checklist, and in the before takeoff checklist. So you're checking them together with the stabilizer trim multiple times. Okay, and that is just adding extra safety barriers. Now, why would, it, why would you need more than once? Why would you need to check something more than once? Well, it is because we know that pilots, especially when they're under time pressure, which you might be when you have, for example, a slot time, or you have uh, de-iced the aircraft, so you have holdover times, so or just general time pressure for the schedule, pilots are known to do something which is called rhyming. They're rhyming checklists. What that means is that since we're doing and responding to the checklist the same way all the time, every single day, if you're under pressure, you're likely to be responding the correct response to a checklist challenge without actually verifying that the system is correct. That's called rhyming. So that could be that you're actually reading flaps and you're responding five and you're not checking it, which means that the flaps might be up. Okay, so you're taking away one safety barrier. And by adding multiple safety barriers, we mitigate against that. We minimize the risk of people rhyming the checklists. All right, so that's why it's done several times. Another thing that we do is that before we, do, before we start taxiing, all right, when we receive the taxi clearance, the first thing we do after we've released the parking brake, which is also monitored by the takeoff config system, is we advance the trust levels quickly forward to beyond 70% and then back again. Now we do it so quickly that the engines does not even start moving. They're not, you know, they're so slow in reacting to trust level movements from that um, from that low power setting that they won't even start moving. But what it does do is it will trigger the warning if something is not right. At that point, the aircraft should already be set up for takeoff. Okay, so if we get a warning at that point, it means that we have omitted something in our procedures or we might have some kind of technical malfunction that is affecting these systems. So what we have to do is if we do that take if, tank off config check, which is called, and we get a warning, we have to stop the aircraft, set the parking brake, we have to realize and check with the systems to see what it was that triggered it. And if it turns out that it's something to do with flaps or with stabilizer trim, we have to redo that checklist in full because it means that we have likely been rhyming the checklist and we need to redo it again, now taking our time doing it correctly. But at this point, you know, we're still far away from the takeoff. So it's not really a, a big threat at this and it has been mitigated against. Now, if we then continue to taxi out, we get clear for takeoff, we line up on the runway and we set takeoff trust and the takeoff comfort warning goes on at that point then it is a whole different deal that is much more serious because it means that we have now gone through all of these safety barriers and basically the only thing stopping us from trying to take off with an incorrect flap or stabilizer trim setting is that warning system, the one that failed in the Span Air Flight 5022. Uh, okay. That is considered extremely uh, serious. So what, what we have to do then is you have to abandon the takeoff, obviously. You have to taxi back into stand set the parking brake, shut down the aircraft, and pull the CVR circuit breaker, the cockpit voice recorder circuit breaker. And that is to preserve the cockpit voice data, right? Because if you don't pull that and the, air, the aircraft has power, the cockpit voice recorder will continue to run and it will just overwrite everything that has been said. And we need that data in order to, for the investigation to show why 
the aircraft could get into the takeoff position without having the proper flaps or stab trim set. Even though we have all of these procedures, it still happened. Okay, so why is this being done? Well, it's because this is how the airline system or the airline world becomes safer. We try to learn from horrible things that happens and from individual mistakes that pilots do. So it's not to, to try to, to uh, give out blame or you know find a scapegoat. No, it's to try to learn. Maybe there's something in our procedures that are not working well. Or maybe there is uh, something that in this particular airport is stressing the pilots to making mistakes like this. Whatever it is, we have to find out why. So by pulling the CVR circuit breaker, you're obviously grounding the aircraft. It will not be flying after that until the CVR has been pulled and replaced. But it is worth it to make sure that whatever happened to put the pilots into that situation does not happen ever again. All right. So it's extremely, extremely serious. And this is something that we take that that we really need to learn from. Right, guys. So I hope you um, you understood that explanation you know and the way that the airline business works in order to mitigate against this risk this is why the airline business is one of the safest in the world because we try to learn from every single thing that happens guys uh, feel free to go into the mantra aviation app and discuss this in the chat afterwards i will be putting out a documentary about the spanner flight 5022 uh, so that we can look at that, discuss it. And we discuss loads of things in the app chat, guys. And I am uh, at the moment investing in making the chat even more good for you guys. Completely free to use. So just download it and get in and help each other out. It's a very, very positive environment in there. We try to help each other out with whatever questions there might be. Um, so get in there and enjoy it. Continue sending me questions, uh, suggestions on future um, videos. And I'll be continuing to try to give you awesome material back. So for now, have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.